those people are advised if they could mm -hmm. please do that. Senator Roberts, okay, thank over you. to you for 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you again for, for being here, uh, Dr Johnson and Dr Stone. I, I would like to table these two documents, these two articles, uh, Chair. Certainly. What are they? They're newspaper articles. Right. We've probably, given that they're public documents, we probably don't need to table them. We can just okay. circulate them around the committee. So these are doc well. The first document is about two articles in the Australian newspaper about parallel temperatures at, at Brisbane Airport, following up from following on from uh, Senator Rennick. The other one is about uh, hmm? forecasts from the Bureau of Meteorology hmm. that have been inaccurate. So going to the first one. I've tabled some important news about parallel temperatures at Brisbane Airport showing your temperature probes do record, yeah, see, yeah. do record temperature, different temperatures to mercury thermometers in the same location at the same time. If I could please go to the Freedom of Information 30 slash 6155 regarding the daily <laughs> maximum and minimum temperature parallel observations for Brisbane Airport, which the stories relate to. What date did you first receive the FOI request? I think you said 2019? Yeah, it was in 12th, 12th, of 12th of December 2019 it was received. What date did you release the documents to the applicant? Well, the documents that were released uh, as agreed with the respondent on the 6th of April 2023. But as I said in my earlier uh, response to Senator Rennick's question, Senator Roberts, the documents released were the ones that we were quite happy to provide in 2019 to the respondent, but the respondent didn't wish to avail themselves of that material uh, back in 2019. So, so why did you keep, the, why did you fight to keep this information a secret? For we didn't so fight. I, I, again, I reiterate in my response to Senator Rennick, we didn't fight anything. We, the request that we received in 2019, were unable to fulfil because the, the information that was requested did not exist. So in the form that the respondent requested it. So we offered the respondent the material we had. They declined, sought to appeal it through the various appeal processes. Uh, our decisions were reaffirmed by both the Information Commissioner and the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. And the information that we offered to provide the respondent back in 2019, we provided in April this year. So this notion, Senator, that the Bureau is withholding information is, is a fallacy. So we'll have to look further into that. But well, that, that's, here, the record, that's the record yep. and the truth, Senator. Okay. You know. um, <clears throat> as a, as a, you're paid by the taxpayer, Dr Johnson, just like I am. Mm -hmm. So you're meant to serve the taxpayer, as I am. Mm -hmm. You have a remuneration package of over half a million dollars a year from taxpayers. The information you have, the work you do, belongs to the taxpayer, correct? Senator, as I said to my response to Senator Rennick, all the Bureau's um, data records are available to the public, either in digital or analogue form. They're held in the analogue form in the National Archive, and the digital records are available on the Bureau's website. I've heard that before, but I've also seen people who can't access that the information. Well, uh, Senator, I can only tell you the, the truth, and the truth is that those records are available on our website or in the National Archive by request. So why did it take an application to the Administrative Appeals Tribunal for you to back down? We, uh, um, sorry, I reject, I I reject that comment, uh, Senator. We, we, um, the, the information that was requested by the respondent or the proponent, I'm sure how you want to characterise it, was not available. So we can't create something that's not available. We offered the, the respondent uh, a set of alternatives which they declined initially and then subsequently agreed to take. So again, this notion that the Bureau is withholding information from the public or from this particular respondent is just not true. It's inaccurate. Okay. I, I can't be any clearer on that, Senator. No, you're clear. <clears throat> Do you disagree that your temperature probes are recording different temperatures to mercury thermometers in the same place at the same time? I'll let Dr Stone address yeah, that. No, yeah. Thank you. Um, no, you, you <coughs> actually expect um, pairs of um, measuring instruments to have different measurements. So if we had two probes, yep. they would be slightly different. I understand the natural variation. Mm -hmm. Yep, with, in, with intolerance, yes. Right. Would the difference between two probes be less or greater than the difference between a probe and a thermo mercury thermometer? So I, I reiterate that, that a, a, merc a, a liquid in glass thermometers have a tolerance, so an acceptable error of 0.5 of a degree. Our 
uh, electronic probes that we've been using for 30-ish years have a tolerance of 0.4 of a degree, and the electronic probes that we're about to in, uh, roll out have a tolerance of 0.2 a degree. And you can expect a difference between two probes that is the sum of the tolerances of the no, two I probes. I understand that. So there is a difference between the mercury in glass and the probes? In which sense? In tolerance? Yes, no, because... In the actual measurement. There'll be difference in the two well, measurements. Well, sometimes, because, because they operate within that tolerance. So, so I understand for, that tolerance. For the, for the ones operating at uh, Brisbane Airport, for example, um, I have the figures <coughs> on the distribution of readings and the... Um, The um, mercury in glass, sorry, I'll find it. Um, I don't have the exact figures, I'm sorry, but um, approximately 40% of the time, um, one of the probes measured above, uh, you know, a higher amount than another. The figures about are 41%. About 30% of the time, they measured below and the balance they measured very similar. So there is a difference? Yes. It has to be? Correct. And, and, right. So and that's 41% of the time it recorded a warmer temperature and cooler temperatures were recorded 26% of the time? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So are you saying that Marahasi or Abbott, uh, their analysis is incorrect or are you saying it may be correct, it's just within allowable tolerances so you don't care? Uh, sorry, which part of their analysis? They, they the 41% quite... warmer? Yeah. And the 26% cooler. Uh, if, if they are the figures, uh, oh, there we are. Sorry, yep, 40. Yep, I've got them here. Yes, that, 41, I mean, that, 26. That is, that is correct. That's correct. Thank you. So, you, do you think it's significant that your new temperature probes are, on average, recording warmer temperatures than the mercury thermometers in the same location at the same time? Uh, they're not, on average. Uh, they're, they're two one hundredths of a degree difference, which is a, which is not a significant difference. I said, on average, no, they're on, recording on a warmer temperature. No, sorry, on average, there was two one hundredths of a degree difference between the, the liquid in glass thermometers. So, on average, they're recording a warmer temperature. Not the point, probes are. 0 0.02 degrees is not a significant difference. So, on average, they're recording warmer temperatures than the mercury? No. 0.02 degrees is not a significant difference. Okay. The story also says, and, and Graham Lloyd is a credible journalist, I've seen his work many times, says that Bureau of Meteorology said that you, Dr Stone, claimed in response to these issues, presumably he asked you. No, he didn't. That all temperature data is publicly available on your website, including the parallel data. Is that true? Uh, all of our digitised data is available on the website and, as Dr Johnson mentioned to you earlier, data that hasn't been digitised is, is available from the National Archive. So the temperature data that was released in the Freedom of Information request was not available on your website, was it? There were two pieces of information mm -hmm. provided. One was scans of field books, which is not been hadn't previously right. been digitised, and that was digitised upon request and provided. And then the electronic data is available uh, on the Bureau website. <coughs> Why were you and the Administrative Appeals Tribunal trying to keep it secret? Sorry. Senator, with respect, I think we've addressed this, this notion that we are withholding information from the public uh, is just false. And so the Administrative Appeals uh, process was, was um, instigated by the proponent who disagreed with the decision that both the Bureau and the Information Commissioner had made in respect to the Freedom of Information request. And again, I reiterate, the Bureau's actions were affirmed by both the Information Commissioner and the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. So again, this notion that the Bureau withholds data is false. And it's very important that it's on the record, because as you say, taxpayers have a legitimate expectation that, that the uh, the data that's generated with their money can you is, 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 is available. So I, I, just, I just don't know how much clearer we can be on this. Can you, can you this. provide the uh, URL where the parallel temperature data was available on your website? 
Sorry. Prior to the FOI. So this is a key point. Yeah. Um, the applicants asked for the report in which parallel data is recorded, and I've just explained the data existed in two places. The respondent refused the, request, the, the offer of data on the basis that we couldn't provide it in one form. It doesn't exist in one form. There are field books that have the manual temperature readings written down, and there's electronic data. Mm -hmm. Bring those two together, and you can construct a parallel data set. But, but they uh, sought to have specified that they would only accept reports of parallel data, which don't exist. So, so I know Senator Roberts, we need to move on. Your time is up. Thank you, Chair.